The Edge of Glory by Alan Stott From the Lucy Wilson Mysteries Lockdown Short Story Collection by Candy Jar Books Read by Alan Stott Six twenty-five a.m. A single car wound its way through the deserted streets of Ogmore by Sea. Donna Price was exhausted. She had just finished a twelve-hour night shift at Princess of Wales Hospital, Bridge End, and was looking forward to a nice cup of tea and a long sleep. Donna had been looking after three people with COVID-19. She drove along Main Road and was heading up the hill when she noticed her hands moving like wavy lines, side to side on the steering wheel. Her arms were wavy lines too. She couldn't see it, but her whole body was moving like a bendy barcode, becoming fainter. Her bendy arms were fading away. She glanced in the mirror just in time to see her bendy face disappearing from view and seconds later, she was gone. Her car slowed and came to a stop against some bushes. The engine stalled. A police patrol car passed by minutes later. Let's have a look at that, Jack, said Officer Costinen. They peered inside Donna's car. Jack tried the driver's door and was surprised that it opened. He noticed the ignition key immediately and turned it off. That's very strange, he said. Nothing except this handbag, said Officer Costinen. She scrummaged around inside the bag until she found a driving licence. Five thousand kilometres away in space, two identical spaceships held station. There were five creatures in each, and they were all intently studying computer screens. The creatures stood upright with a floor-length cloak covering their bodies. Only their arms were visible, thin and long, ending in three jointed fingers and a thumb. Their heads looked like large octopuses, but without the legs, bulbous and covered in blue veins, sitting on top of the cloaks. There were no faces, just two eyes on stalks and mouths which only appeared when the creature spoke. They all wore dark green cloaks, except for the leader, who wore purple. Why do they mostly remain in their dwellings? It asked. It is most puzzling, Sorb, replied the nearest creature. Such a superb planet, yet they do not venture out much. No matter. We are still able to teleport them easily. We have found it easier to lock on, Sorb, when they are sat at their screens. Excellent. Keep them coming. This is a planet which I am very much looking forward to taking over. Lucy Wilson looked out of her window. She was feeling rather fed up. Her parents were still angry with her for breaking the back door window. Normally, they would have grounded her, but that didn't work at the moment. Usually, the street would be thronged with people, working, playing, travelling, walking the dog. But not now. This lockdown is becoming boring, she thought. Died the postman delivered a letter to the house opposite and returned to his trolley. Lucy watched him sort the next letter and move on. He began to shimmer and his skin became wavy. Then he faded 
and disappeared. Aliens, whispered Lucy. They're here. She grabbed her phone and called Hobo. You must get here as fast as you can, Hobo. Aliens have arrived. Stay undercover. Do not move out into the open where they can see you or you'll be zapped. I do that anyway, Lucy. Life's like a computer game at the moment, trying to avoid people. Lucy hung up. She went back to the window to keep watch. Hobo knew better than to ask what this was all about. He grabbed his backpack with a few essentials and ran from one tree to another, under cover, as much as he could. He arrived breathlessly and Lucy opened the door, stepping back. You know I'd normally ask you in, but I'm not sure if it's such a good idea. Lucy frowned and instead stepped outside herself. She led Hobo round the side of the house and, at two metres, started to explain the situation. Aliens, we've got some action at last. About time too, Hobo replied. I'm getting really fed up with this lockdown and social distancing. I need to find out what they are doing and why. I saw Di the postman disappear into thin air. Poor Di, said Hobo. Yes, his luck's been pretty bad lately, said Lucy. So, they are teleporting people somewhere, Hobo said with a smile. This sounds exciting. I'm going to let them zap me. You stay here, I'll be back in five minutes. Hobo watched as Lucy ran out into the road, waving her arms about wildly. She shimmered, faded and then disappeared. Lucy felt as though she was being rapidly sucked upwards inside a tube. It was pitch black, but in less than two seconds she popped out inside a spaceship. She looked about and noted five strange creatures looking fervently at computer screens. Thousands of people were constantly coming up through the same tube and were instantly changed into a two-dimensional figure, just like a photograph, that soared across the room and dropped down into a huge storage chest. On the front was a digital counter which was increasing with each person. It read 5, 2, 7, 8, 6, 4, 9, 5, 1, 5. Sarg, what is the current total? Sarg turned around to check the counter and spotted Lucy. Sorb, we have an intruder. Sorb turned looking at Lucy with evil intent and some curiosity. So, you have evaded the space condenser machine. How did you manage that, human? Lucy didn't feel it necessary to tell him. My name is not human. It's Lucy Wilson. Who are you and what are you doing to our people? She looked at the constant conveyor of two-dimensional people flitting across the vessel and down into the chest. Hobo's mother, followed by Constable Jack Flowers, dropped neatly into place. Huh. Hobo won't like that, she thought. I don't think you are in any position to demand answers, Earthling. We are in control here. You may be at the moment, Sorb, but don't get overconfident. Resistance is useless, Lucy Wilson. You cannot stop us. We are taking over your planet and capturing every one of you humans. We want the planet for ourselves. He pointed to the images travelling across the vessel just as Boris Johnson and Donald Trump were dropping into place. See? 
We are capturing your leaders. Many other world leaders were dropping into the chest. Queen Elizabeth was next, closely followed by Prince Philip. You're making this so easy for us because you are sitting in your dwellings conferencing each other over your internet. We only have to lock into your system and we can see everyone who is on a computer or phone just by utilising the cameras. Then it's very simple to teleport them straight here where we space condense them into two dimensions. Sarg added. By midday tomorrow we will have your entire population in that storage chest. Lucy noticed that the number now showed 5441390201. Uh, why did you leave your own world? Our son was dying and it was dragging our planet toward it into the vortex. We have no choice but to look for an alternative home. We have travelled through 13 galaxies looking for a planet suitable for us. Huh, so you pick ours? Yours is a beautiful planet, the bluest we have seen anywhere, and it has oxygen which we need. Why do you all remain in your dwellings? It seems very strange when you have so much beauty around you. Lucy had the initial thought of lying to them and to keep the coronavirus a secret for the moment. Maybe she could use it later to kill off these aliens. She decided to wait for another plan to pop into her head instead, which, she hoped, would have a better chance of success. There is a terrible virus plaguing the Earth right now, she said. It's killing many humans. Maybe it'll kill you. I doubt that, Swarb replied. Our technology is far superior to yours. Well, that's why we have to stay indoors, because the only technology we have against the virus is isolation. That's pathetic, Swarb snapped. Pathetic, but true, she snapped back. And it's slowly working. Lucy was using every moment of this conversation to study the ship and its controls. She watched Sarg as he located Michael Gove, who was working at his computer in Westminster. Sarg pressed a button and the MP shimmered and waved, faded and disappeared. Two seconds later, he popped out of the tube as a photo and glided across the room until he dropped down into the chest. That's the first time I've seen him with his mouth closed, she thought. The other aliens were teleporting people in the same way. Uh, where's the rest of your population? Lucy asked. In that second spaceship that you can see through those viewing galleries. Sorb pointed to the sister ship. They are in hibernation in a chest exactly like the one holding your people until we can get rid of you all. Lucy could see through the gallery windows into a second spaceship, which looked identical. There were five aliens in there. How many of you are there all together? Uh, we are a small population of about 22 million. And you're going to displace a population of over 7 billion people. That's incredibly selfish. Be that as it may. We are taking your planet, and as you can see, there is absolutely nothing you can do about it. I wouldn't take any bets on that if I were you, Sorb. Sorb laughed loudly. <laughs> you don't appear to be in a position to stop us, Lucy Wilson. You've never come up against Lucy Wilson before, Sorb. You are a brave human, Sorb said, laughing. <laughs> but totally misguided. What do you intend to do with everybody? When all of you humans are in the storage chest, 
We will fire the spaceship straight into the sun. Lucy felt stunned. Why would you do that? What have we ever done to you? Nothing. So why don't you share the planet with us? Sarg answered. Because you are resourceful, and we would not be safe if you were kept in captivity. Besides, look at how you humans are treating your planet. You are destroying great areas of it. We will take much better care than you have done so far. So, we have to eliminate you, Sorb pointed out. All of you! Sorb lifted his thin arm and pointed a finger at her. Lucy had been involved with too many death rays and lasers to be unprepared for this moment. She quickly reached inside her pocket and drew out her mirror. She held it up just as Sorb fired and the blue ray bounced back off the mirror. She aimed it back at Sorb but missed him and the creature next to him collapsed into a small cloud of dust and dropped to the floor. Sorb looked at her and snarled. Angrily, he raised his finger again, but Lucy was already reaching for the ring on the string around her neck. She grabbed it, held it, and thought of Hobo. Instantly, she was back in the shadow of her house. Well, he asked, when are you going? See? I told you I'd be back in five minutes. You didn't even know I'd left. I've been, and it's worse than you could ever imagine. Tell me, he said. Wow, they don't sound like nice people, he said when she'd finished. What are we going to do? Get on to everybody we know on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram and tell them not to sit in front of their screens unless the camera is covered. Hobo was on it like a rash. And tell them to share it with everybody they know. Lucy quickly ran indoors and up to her bedroom. She folded a piece of paper and placed it over the camera of her laptop. Then she logged on to one of her social groups and sat nibbling a nail, waiting for it to load. There were three friends already chatting. Cover your camera! Cover your camera! she urged. Hi, Luce, where have you... Lucy watched as each one of them shimmered, waved, faded and disappeared. Any luck? she called out of the window. Can't get anybody! Hobo called back. Lucy rang the local radio station to get a message broadcast, but it was too late. The lady at the other end must have been looking at her laptop because she stopped talking and Lucy could tell that she had been zapped. Everyone opening the message was zapped before they could finish reading. Plan B, she called out. Glad you've got one, he yelled back. The only way we can control this now is from inside the spaceship. Haven't been in a spaceship for ages, Hobo said, his eyes lighting up. Remember, keep waving your arms, especially when you pop out of the tube or you will be space condensed into two dimensions. Gotcha! We need to stick together so that we arrive at the same time, she added. So when we run into the road, we need to hold hands. Luce, you've never asked me to hold your hand before. I think I'm going to blush. Pack it in. Are you ready? Lucy ran down the stairs, out of the front door and grabbed Hobo's hands. Three, two, one... They ran down the path, waving their free arms wildly. You're disappearing, Luz. So are you. See you in space. They were gone.
Hobo popped out first, and he immediately looked for somewhere to hide. Behind the storage chest seemed like a good idea. Lucy was right behind him and followed. They sat, their eyes searching the ship for the aliens. Lucy took out her hand sanitizer and squeezed a big glob into her and Hobo's hands. There didn't seem to be any aliens on board. She looked through the gallery window at the other ship and could see that there were nine aliens. They were all glued to their screens. Blimey, they're ugly, said Hobo. Lucy checked on the number of captives on the dial. Six billion, eight hundred and twenty-two million, four hundred ninety-four thousand, three hundred fifty-eight. We need to work fast. They've got most of the planets up here now. She looked at the line of photos marching across the room towards the chest, just in time to see Lady Gaga and Justin Timberlake snared in 2D. Right, show me the controls, Hobo said. They spent 20 minutes checking buttons, dials and levers. Now I think it's time for me to go and get up the nose of Sorb again. Lucy said. Hobo nodded. This was his first action of the operation to save Earth. He reached for the button. Ready? Ready as I'll ever be. Hobo pressed the button and Lucy appeared instantly in the other ship. Sorb seemed pleased to see her. Lucy Wilson, if I'm not mistaken. You have made one great big mistake in returning. I won't fail with you this time. He raised his arm and the same finger began to glow blue. Stop, Lucy cried. Wait, don't you want to know how I got here? No, not really. You're here and you are holding us up. We've got nearly every one of you pathetic humans in our storage chest now. And it won't be long before we have the rest. The finger began to glow. But Sorb, I'm not alone this time. Look. Hobo was grinning and waving at them from the other ship. Sorg, get over there and kill him. He can try, Lucy said. Sarg hesitated. Get on with it. Sorb bellowed. Sarg pushed the teleport button, but nothing happened. Sarg. Move it! I'm trying, Sorb. Something seems to be blocking the transfer in the other ship. Hobo waved again and put on his very best. What? Not working for you, is it? Face. And held up both hands in feigned shock. Sorb was furious. You! You are responsible for this, Lucy Wilson. I have a good mind to... to... What? Sorb, I will kill you now, he snarled, aiming his finger at her again. But that won't stop the return flow of humans back to good old virus-infested Earth. What? How? What have you done? Nothing yet, but we will begin the return to Earth any minute. You cannot return them against the incoming flow. They would die. Okay, we'll have to wait. But my friend Hobo over there has control of your other ship. So, when it's safe, you won't have the power to stop the return. My dear Lucy, why do you think we are all over here with our population hibernating in the chest behind us? Why don't you tell me, Sorb? And, in a few moments, every human being will be in that ship. Except for me. Not a problem. Aliens have said that about me before and lost. We are ready to fly down to our new home the minute the last human is tucked up in the chest. Then we will begin the final odyssey. Sorb, you're forgetting about me and Hobo. You are nothing. Grab her. A myriad of alien arms shot at her and grabbed hold. 
Lucy could not move. She could hardly breathe. Sorb pointed his finger at her head. And now it's time to end this pitiful, stupid resistance of yours forever. You will be the first human to die. Sarg spoke. So, the last few thousand humans will be aboard in five minutes and twenty-three seconds. Do you hear, Lucy Wilson? Just over five minutes and we will have captured your entire race. The motors will automatically start and the ship will begin its final flight. The computers are pre-programmed with an encrypted code and there's nothing that little bald-headed squirt can do about it. The human race is about to find out what the sun is made of. Lucy began to struggle, but it was useless. The finger began to glow blue. Now would be a good time, she called out. Hobo timed it perfectly. Lucy arrived on board the other ship and watched as the blue laser zapped one of the aliens, blowing it up into blue slimy gloop that splattered all over the spaceship. Sorb looked across at her and snarled. Sarb, open the intercom. Let's say goodbye to these two half-wits. Sarg flicked the switch. Lucy Wilson, that's going to be the last time anyone calls your name. And you've done the job for me, Hobo. You've now managed to get her off my ship and onto the doomed one. Prepare for a hot reception. Sarg announced. All loaded, Sorb. Did you hear that, you fools? Every last one of the human race is now on board that ship. You ready, hobo? Lucy asked without taking her eyes off Sorb. Of course. It's a breeze for an experienced space traveller like me. Just call it now, she said calmly. And hobo threw two switches simultaneously. Sorb looked across at Lucy. Goodbye. We'll enjoy our new home, but I don't think you're going to enjoy your new home quite as much. <laughs> you would not be able to survive the virus any more than we can. So it's just as well you're not going to Earth. Goodbye, Sorb. Oh, you have completely lost the plot now, little girl. Have I? Are you sure? Check which ship you are in, Sorb. He studied the dials, the location of Earth, and the plotted course of the vessel. Confidence became curiosity, which became concern, and then became panic. He looked back at Lucy. Hobo had swapped everyone into the opposite ship. She and Hobo were smiling and waving with, I told you not to underestimate me, looks on their faces. No! He screamed. His vessel slowly picked up speed and headed out into space. Suddenly it disappeared completely as it kicked into warp factor speed. Not really heading for the sun, is it? Nah, I changed the encryption. They're on their way across 20 galaxies. Should find something suitable in that time for 22 million uglies. Lucy smiled at him. She would normally high-five him, but with social distancing, this wasn't wise. Hobo could always be relied on to do the right thing. OK, Earth Defender, he said. We've got plenty of work to do to get this lot back to their homes. Um, would it? Be too much to get Lady Gaga to sing us a song before she leaves, Lucy said. What's your request? The uh, Edge of Glory sounds appropriate. I'll ask, Hobo said and grinned.
Do you want to read more fantastic Lucy Wilson stories? Why not visit the Candy Jar Books website to catch up on all the books in the series? You can also sign up to our free newsletter to receive regular news and updates about forthcoming titles. Visit www.candyjarbooks.co.uk